Okay, so we're getting ready for the next stage of developing the 204 Ruger. We're going to move from full length sizing to neck sizing to try and increase the consistency of our loads. Now, before we start that, I want to test the difference in neck diameter, uh, the full length die versus the neck sizing die. So we're going to go ahead and uh, measure the difference if there is one in uh, the two dies. Okay, so here I have six twice fired uh, Remington brass. They're all from the same lot. Now I measured all six necks before sizing any of them. And they all measured right on uh, outside neck diameter of 0.231. These three have been full length sized, these three have been neck sized. Now what I found when I measured them was the three that have been full length sized all measured consistently at 0.225 inches while those that were neck sized measured in at 0.227 inches. So what that means is it's the neck sizing die is exerting two uh, thousandths of an inch less crush on the bullet, less grip on the bullet, if you will. Now, what that can translate into is uh, lower starting pressure and lower velocity. So that's something we're going to want to watch for. going to want to take the chronograph uh, when we shoot the first neck size hand loads and see whether or not we need to increase the powder charge to get back to that uh, mid 3,800 feet per second velocity where uh, the gun shoots the 32 grain is good. So we're going to go ahead and uh, proceed with the next step. Alright, here we have the next stage of load development. This is the neck sizing test. On the right I have seven of the original hand loads. They are full length sized and Remington brass. They are loaded with 27.7 uh, grains of benchmark using the 32 grain Blitz King with a case overall length of 2.3 inches. The cases on the left are identical in charge weight, case overall length, and um, bullet. The only difference being they are neck sized. Now the ones with the red heads are Remington brass and the ones with the natural brass colored heads are Hornady. Before comparing the Remingtons to the Hornady, I wanted to compare the full length sized Remingtons to the neck sized Remingtons in order to see if there's a noticeable gain in accuracy or if the velocity suffers or increases just to test to see what the differences are. Now, originally I had planned on glass bedding the rifle before shooting this test and I thought that might yield an unfair advantage to these rounds. After glass bedding the rifle these might shoot more accurately and that could be due to the glass bedding as opposed to the neck sizing. So I'm going to shoot these before bedding the rifle that way it'll be an apples to apples comparison with the previous hand loads. So we'll get out and try these and then move on to glass bedding. All right, so we're gonna shoot the test for uh, the neck size brass versus the full length size brass. The target over there at 100 yards with the new scope sighted in. It's a Bushnell Legend uh, 15 power mill dot. So we're, gonna, so we're gonna go ahead and get to it. Okay, we're getting on to the next size Remingtons. In the target, we got the uh, full length size Remington brass and the next size Remington brass. One flyer here. This, I would tend to want to attribute to the wind it coming this way because we've had a breeze on and off, but can't say for sure. So we're going to go back and fire the Hornady neck sized ones. So far the velocity hasn't suffered an effect of uh, being neck sized versus full length sized. So we'll go back and shoot the last group and see what we get. One other thing I like to mention is that uh, I noticed the bolt rolled a lot easier on the neck sized Hornady brass than it did on the neck sized Remington brass. Now this supports the theory that uh, the case has uh, less volume inside due to the walls being thicker. If the walls are thicker it's going to stretch less and uh, that can up the velocity a little bit. So I'm thinking we'll do a CC test on the, some of these casings to find out if 
they truly do have a more restricted case volume. All right, so we've got the three groups we shot. Um, this one was with the original load using full length size Remington brass. This one was with just the neck size Remington brass. And here's the group we had with the Hornady brass that was neck sized. Now velocity between the Remingtons didn't really change between being neck sized and full length sized. The Hornady brass, however, may have a little less case volume because the velocity was slightly higher there. So we're going to go ahead and glass bed the rifle now and try another set of groups with just these Hornadies to see if there's a noticeable improvement in accuracy through glass bedding. But before we get to that, uh, we're going to finish off with something else. Yeah, it's a 10 gram CO2 tank for a paintball gun. And we're going to see what a 46 grain soft point bullet will do to that at 100 yards. Okay, so Adam, who's been gracious enough to be on camera duty today, is going to bust some of those 12 gram CO2s here from 100 yards. That was fun. Decimated the end of this log. So uh, now we're going to see if we can flip a piece of block wood. Same kind of 12 ounce, uh, sorry, 12 gram CO2 canister. Okay, so here's the rundown on the full length sizing versus neck sizing of the brass. The best group of the day was uh, some Hornady brass that was neck sized coming in at 0.434 inch at 100 yards, excluding of course the flyer. Now I had one flyer in two of these groups and I think that has something to do with my Lee bullet seating die deforming the ballistic tip on the Blitz Kings when it's seating them. A couple of them got deformed, I should have took a note of which ones but I didn't. So in the future we're going to run a test firing these deformed bullets against perfect bullets at 100 yards and see if it yields a uh, if that's the cause of the flyers or the bigger groups uh, at this shorter range. Now back to that 0.434 inch. That 0.434 inch is not any better than what you're seeing with the full length size Remington brass. So on this test uh, there was no noticeable gain in accuracy by neck sizing as opposed to full length sizing. Now we're going to go ahead and glass bed the 204 and fire a few consecutive groups with this load and see if it is any better now okay now we're gonna go ahead and glass bed the 204 we're gonna fire a few consecutive groups with this load here and see if there's any gain in accuracy from glass bedding the rifle uh, on another note this load did yield a higher velocity than the other two they uh, also registered higher velocities than normal I am thinking this has something to do with the chronograph typically I set my chronograph up at 10 feet but where we were shooting had a nice flat spot about uh, 13 feet down the road uh, from the muzzle. So I set the chronograph up there and uh, to me it makes no sense why I'd be yielding a higher velocity. Typically the bullet slows down as soon as it leaves the muzzle. So being uh, three feet further than I typically put the chronograph you wouldn't expect to see a rise in velocity. We're going to look into that and uh, get back to you with the results. But for now uh, we're going to go bed that rifle and get back out to the range. This has been Skylar408. Thanks for watching.